Hi, how's it going everybody? It's me, Max, and in this series of videos that I'm going to be uploading to the channel, we're going to be learning all about Python and MySQL. The goal of this tutorial series will be to understand how we can store, retrieve, and manipulate data stored in MySQL databases using the Python programming language. In this very first video, we're going to start off by getting MySQL installed and set up. In addition, we're also going to run a few very easy queries just to make sure that everything is working properly. And in the videos that follow, we're going to go into gradually more detail on how the structured query language SQL actually works. If these videos do end up helping you out, then let me know by leaving a like rating down below and subscribing to this channel as I'm trying to hit 5,000 subscribers by the end of this year. But now, let's get right in. To start off, go ahead and navigate to the same page that I am on right now. I'm going to be leaving a link to this page down in the description below. On this page, you're going to find two download buttons. Regardless of which one you choose, you're going to end up with the same result. I'm going to choose the installer on the bottom just because the installation method is a little bit simpler. On the next page, it will ask you to sign up or log in. I'm going to press no thanks, just start my download and it will start my download. In the bottom left hand corner, you will see that the download has started and just after a couple of moments, you'll see that the download finishes. Once the download in the bottom left hand corner finishes, you can go ahead and press it and the MySQL installer will open up. On the very first page, you're going to be asked what setup type you want to choose. I'm going to go with the developer default and then I'm going to press on next. On the next page, you're going to see all the individual components that are going to be installed. All you have to press here is execute and it will start. Now this is going to take a few moments. I'm going to speed up the footage and we'll be back in just a moment once it's done. Once all the components have been installed, you can safely press the next button to go on to the product configuration. In the product configuration, it's going to give you an overview of all the things that you're going to configure in the next couple of steps. So go ahead, press next. In the type and networking tab, we're going to leave everything as is by default, and we're going to press on next again. Then comes the authentication method. We're going to use the strong password as is recommended and press next. In the accounts and roles tab, you're going to have to specify a password, which you're going to use whenever you connect to the database. So make sure you remember the password that you set. I'm simply going to use root as my password. Next up comes the windows service tab. And over here, I'm going to leave everything as is. The only check mark that I'm going to take out is the start the MySQL server at startup because I don't want it to start every time I start up my computer. Next up comes the server file permissions tab. And in this tab, we're not going to change anything. We're going to leave everything as is and press next again. Then we're on the very final tab where we apply the configuration. Over here, we need to make no changes. All we need to do is press finish. After that, we're brought back to the product configuration screen where we see that the MySQL server has been configured. And next up, we're going to configure the MySQL router. On the next page, we're leaving everything as is and we're going to press finish. Back in the overview screen, you can see that we have one more thing to configure. We're going to press on next and then we're going to pass the password, which we chose earlier, into the password field. And once we've passed in the password, we're going to press on check and this green check mark should appear. After that, we're going to press on next again. On this next screen, we're simply going to apply the configurations by pressing execute. And once the configuration has been applied, we simply press finish. In the product configuration screen, you will see that you have configured everything. So then again, press on next. Then in the very final screen, you can choose if you want to start the programs you just installed. I'm going to take the check marks out and press on finish. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to have a brief look at the MySQL workbench, which we just downloaded. In order to do that, we're going to navigate to the start menu and in the search bar, we're going to search for MySQL workbench and then we're going to open it up. In the first screen, you should see a welcome screen. And in addition to that, you should also see MySQL connections with one localhost connection already being there. If for some reason you don't see any connections, don't worry, all you need to do is click on the plus sign and then the setup window will open up. In the small setup window, you're first going to give the connection a title. We're going to call it local instance. The rest we're going to leave as is. But, but then uh, one more thing we need to do is we need to add the password. And that's the password we specified earlier 
when we were installing MySQL. So in the password field, we're going to pass in root and press OK. After that, we're going to test the connection and you'll see that it says successfully made the connection. And then we can press on OK and OK again and we'll have the local instance that should actually be there by default. But if it's not there, then now you know how to add it. So once you have these connections, you can go ahead and open up one of them by double clicking on one of the connections. Sometimes you'll be asked for a password, so just enter your password. And after you've done that, you will have this workbench screen. On the very uh, left-hand side, you have the navigation menu where you have all the databases. In the middle, you have the window where you can enter your queries. And on the very right hand side, you have some sort of SQL additions, but frankly, it's a field that you won't need from the very beginning. Let's start off nice and easy by creating a test database. To create a database, all we need to write is create database, and we're going to call it test DB. And once we wrote that, all we need to do is highlight this line and press the small um, lightning icon. So after we press the lightning button, uh, we can then go ahead and look at the schemas. If we press refresh, the new test database, which we just created, will pop up. If you see some other databases in this list, don't be confused. There are some sample databases that are sometimes added. Just ignore them for the moment. All right, so the next thing we want to do is we want to add a table to the database we just created. To execute SQL statements against the database we just created, we need to select it or to set it. To do that, you can simply double click on the database and you'll notice that it becomes bold. And once it's bold, we're going to go back to the queries and we're going to write create table and we're going to create a table that is called members. And this table is going to have a member ID, which is going to be an integer. In addition to that, it is also going to save a last name, which is going to be a variable character of length 255. So as you can see, when you create a table, you can also directly specify what columns you want and what data types are going to be stored within the columns. As before, we can simply select the line we just wrote and then press on the lightning icon. And you'll notice that if we then refresh the schemas and then click on the drop dropdown uh, with the tables, we have a new table, which is called members, which is the one we just created. As a next step, we're going to insert one line of data into this table. In order to do that, we can simply write insert into then we're going to name the table that we want to insert into, which is the members table. And within brackets, we're going to write the um, two column names, which was member ID and then last name. And finally, we're going to specify the values we want to add by writing the keyword values. And in parentheses, we're going to write the first value, which is simply going to be one, two, three, which is going to be the member ID. And then we're also going to specify the name, which is going to be Bill. All right, then we select this line and click on the lightning again, and the entry will be added. So how can we see that we actually added this data? One way is to right click on the members table and select the first uh, 1000 rows. And you'll see that we get the entry displayed on the bottom. Uh, another way that we can display this is to go back to our queries and then select star from members. By using the star, we're simply selecting everything. And if we go and execute that, you'll see that we have um, the entry we just created displayed on the bottom. So now we know more or less how the MySQL workbench works. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to do exactly the same steps that we did in the MySQL workbench, but we're going to be doing this in Python. To demonstrate all of this, I'm going to be using PyCharm. 
Now, if you do not yet have PyCharm installed and want to set that up, then I'll be leaving a link to a video that I recently made in the description down below that you can go ahead and check out. All right, so in this blank PyCharm file, I'm going to create a new project and I'm simply going to create a project with the name test database. And then I'm going to leave the virtual environment um, tag checked and press create. And I'm going to create this in this window. All right, so it's going to be a couple of seconds until I have everything set up. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to the terminal and I am going to install uh, the SQL connector, which allows us to create a database connection. To do that, I'm simply going to write pip install and then m my SQL minus connector minus Python. And it's going to take just a couple of moments to install that. And once that's done, I am going to create a new file. And hold on, I'm going to create a new Python file and I'm going to call it main. All right, so now let's get to the code. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import the MySQL connector. So I'm going to write import MySQL.connector. And the first thing we need to do is we need to establish a connection to the database. So to do that, we're going to create a variable and then we're going to write mysql.connector.connect. And in parentheses, we then need to pass in the information required to connect to the database. So we're going to write host and the database is called localhost then the next thing we need to pass in is the user and that is going to be root and finally we're going to have to add the password which was also root okay so once that's done we can then go ahead and create a cursor and the cursor is what we need to execute queries against our database. So let's go ahead and write my cursor and then set it equal to con dot cursor. And we're then going to execute our very first query, um, which was to create a database. So we're going to write my cursor, then dot execute. And then in um these parentheses we're going to add the sql to create the database so we're going to write create database and also add the name of the new database now we need to make sure we choose a different name other than test db because we already have a database called like that so we're going to call it test database 2. all right so let's go ahead and execute this and once, that done, once that's done, you'll notice that there's nothing in the terminal output. But if we go back to our workbench and click on this refresh icon, you will see that now we have the test DB that we created earlier. But in addition to that, we also have the test database, which we just created a moment ago in Python. So that's great. Perfect. So after we've done that, the next thing we need to do is we want to go ahead and create the table members. To do that, we need to add one more thing into our connection because now we have created a database and we want to execute all the queries that we now um, write down against this test database over here. So we're going to write uh, database over here and we're going to set it equal to the name of the database. And then after that, we're going to create the very first query um, where we create the table. Let me go ahead and copy and paste this just because I'm a bit too lazy to write it out. Um, so I'm creating a table. It's uh, the table members. And then we're specifying the columns that we want in the table which was the member ID, which was an integer, 
and then the last name, which was a variable character of length 255. Now I'm going to comment out this line over here, quite simply because we've already created the database and we don't want to overwrite it. Now we're going to run this. We get no errors, which is great. And then in the test database, we should now, after we refresh it, find a table which is called members. And we do, this is the one we just created in Python. Okay, so now that looks good. The next thing we want to do is we want to go ahead and um, insert some data into this table. So I'm going to, again, copy and paste some code uh, just to make it a little bit more easy for me. So we're executing the following query, which is the one that I have written over here. So we're inserting into the members table and then we press, uh, specify the column names and then we pass the values. Now you'll notice over here that I have these two percentage S signs and these are quite simply um, placeholders which are filled by these two values that come after the comma. So we're inserting into the members table the values that you can see over here, which is one, two, three, and bill. And just to make the values different to what we had before, let's choose one, two, three, four, and let's not choose bill, but we'll choose will. All right, so after we go ahead and run this, we don't get any errors again. And when we go to the table um, that we were just uh, creating in Python, we can go to the members and then select the first 100 rows. Uh, and there's nothing there yet, which is strange, but let me try that again. Oh, yeah, I made a mistake. I'm actually glad I made this mistake because this is one which happens quite frequently. When you execute a insert into query, you also need to make sure that you commit the SQL statement. And that is something that I didn't do. So we need to add this line of code, connection commit, to make sure that we actually commit this insert statement into the database. So I'm going to run this again, but now I'm going to have the desired result because in the test database, which we just created, after I select the first thousand rows, you'll see that we have exactly the values which we expect to have there, which is one, two, three, four, and will. All right, so we're gonna leave it there for this very first video. Stay tuned, there's going to be more coming out on this channel, and see you in the next one.